Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to Project Irrationality. You might say, isn't the PC done and finished? Yes, absolutely. Still, I'm not using it right now because I'm still stuck with my old PC. This is still the system or the rig I've been using for the past two years, I think, with this monitor and uh, everything that's on this table right here. And this table is really, it's, it's not great. I mean, it's a table I bought, I don't know, like three, four, five years ago, even even longer, I think, and it cost like 80 euro and it's very, very bad quality. I even had to make my own kind of monitor um, extension stand so I could put my monitor on here. And uh, yeah, it's just very bad quality in general. That's why we are going to update my desk today. So we are finally able to use my PC from Project Irrationality because it's even just too big to put it onto this desk right here. So first step is assembly of the new desk. It's an IKEA desk and you might say why are you talking about Sheik? Could you please not? <laughs> anyway the desk is Idazen I think it's called from IKEA. It's a very very nice desk. It's the same desk I'm using for all the other videos because it's electrically adjustable in height which is very important for the YouTube videos. I can just easily adjust it for daily use. If I'm building a system it's much more convenient if I can just lower the table or increase it for shooting the videos because everything I'm shooting is while standing up which is much more comfortable for videos than sitting in a chair like this. That's why I decided to get the same kind of desk for my PC here as well. So let's go over and start assembly. As you can see we have a lot of help. Sheik is trying to help us with unpackaging. Nice help. You realize that this was the correct choice for gaming when the power supply of the table has the exact same wires as the 6-pin PCI Express power supply from GPUs. Yeah, it's just the same Molex connector that we see on our PCs every single day. This is how the setup looks right now. I have the table set up. I also have my Project Irrationality PC set up. The only thing missing is that Corsair finally gets to fix their IQ software because yeah, you can see it's still not detected correctly on the memory dims. The four dims on the right are still not illuminated, which is kind of annoying. 
Then I also decided to get those new speakers, which are basically G Logitech uh, G560 speakers. I'm not using speakers that often, that's why I don't really want to spend that much money on the speakers on the PC. Usually I'm just using my headset and for a headset I also still have to find a solution where I'm going to place or mount this headset. Maybe I can somehow mount it here on the table or here on the right where I have my GPU collection. For the future I want to do a little bit more live streaming and that's why I also need some more light in addition to what I currently have in my room. Because all the light sources are from behind this camera right now which is also the light I'm using for my normal YouTube videos for my table that's over there. And if I'm sitting on the table right here I need light sources from behind the screen and that's why I got two Elgato key lights which I will mount behind the screen right here and then I also still have to find some kind of mounting mechanism for this Sony Alpha 6500 which will be my live streaming camera. It has a 16mm Sigma lens on there which should be a much better solution than using any kind of webcam because the webcams are especially with low light uh, not that great that's why I'm going to use this Sony Alpha 6500 yeah, I know that you also like this camera. And I will use them in combination with the Elgato Camlink 4K. And the Camlink 4K basically allows to connect um, such a camera over HDMI directly to my system right here. And should give me a much better image quality. I still have to find a way to mount this camera to the tail because it's a little heavy due to the lens. I will have to find a good camera arm to mount this somehow on the table and then have it facing towards me right here. But let's get to the Elgato key lights. I think I found a quite good solution. This is an Elgato key light stand. I just stole it from my third key light. I think you can also get those Elgato standoffs or arms separately and I attached a Valimax Pro adapter to it which is something I bought for a different case actually but it turned out to fit on this Elgato arm and then exactly on the camera I think this is how I will try to mount the camera behind my screen. The first Elgato key light is mounted behind the monitor already. You can see it's very, very bright. It's not configured so far, it's just switched on. So I have a little bit more light for shooting this video. The camera is also mounted correctly and already attached and connected to the power delivery. And now on the tail you can see the Camlink 4K, which is what I'm going to use to connect the camera to my system. That's a very convenient uh, thing to use because you just attach your mini HDMI from the camera to HDMI of the Camlink 4K which is then using USB and then delivers the display signal to your system which you can then use with for example OBS. System so far finally ready to use also attached the side panel right now. The only thing that's really still quite annoying is the fact that the Corsair sticks are not illuminated correctly. So yeah the Corsair software is only made for 8 dims so far but I'm using 12. So I hope that Corsair will eventually fix this. I'm also running some PUBG right now to show you something I discovered from the G500 and 60 speakers. They have some kind of ambilight function which you can see now. So if I move within the game the speaker light will change accordingly to what you can see on the screen which is a, a quite cool function I think. The Logitech speakers also come with some kind of software conflict. I'm not entirely sure what's going on but if I keep the software open and want to open, for example, Corsair IQ, which is also not the brightest software, which is kind of funny, but um, if I keep the Logitech software open and want to open I Corsair IQ, it often doesn't even start. And then somehow or sometimes if I keep uh, the Logitech software open and use IQ or Asus Aura Sync, I'm getting uh, software problems, means that the RGB is not applying correctly. And then the thing is you can see now that everything is working correctly with this ambilight function in the background and then if I close the Logitech software or I have to close it correct um, entirely in the tray. Now it's closed and you can see speakers are reset. Why do I have to keep open the software while running speakers? That's really, really annoying. They should just embed some kind of controller inside the speakers um, that they can store the RGB function while 
keeping the software closed. Like having five, six, seven softwares open at the same time is really annoying and it's still a problem nowadays that every single vendor is thinking that they're the only one we're using. So Logitech is thinking, oh, we're only using Logitech software and Corsair is thinking, oh, you're probably only using Corsair components and Asus is thinking exactly the same, which is really, really annoying. Last step for this video is trying to see how far we can push my Titan RTX. This card is completely stock, there are no hardware modifications done to this card. I first thought about doing a power limit modification. The thing you can usually do is the liquid metal mod, which often results in losing your shunt resistor after a longer time period because the liquid metal can eat up the solder tin. For example, Jay uh, experienced this recently when he was working on his Titan RTX. It's not really a problem because you can simply solder back the shunt resistor, but it can be annoying if you want to keep a system like this running as a daily working system. And I don't really want to take it apart after I know how long it takes to drain the system and to reassemble everything. That's why I just simply want to keep it running. There are no hardware, hardware modifications done to the card. The alternative would be to solder an additional shunt resistor parallel on top of the existing one, but this modification also has a certain risk. But this modification has the problem that you will have to rework your water cooling because the water block is so tightly manufactured that there is no space for soldering additional shunt resistors on top. I would have to rework my water cooling block, which is something I didn't want to do. That's why I didn't uh, perform this type of hardware modification on my Tizen RTX. First step, what we will try today is just do some 3D Mark times by Extreme. First of all, just get a baseline score with the GT1 or GT2 and then do power limit, uh, overclocking of the memory and then overclocking of the GPU. See how good the sample is. Baseline score from times by Extreme is now 46.27 FPS. For overclocking, I'm using three different tools. First of all, MSI Afterburner for adjusting uh, the frequencies itself, and then GPU-Z, obviously, for verification. But I'm also using Fermic at the same time with a custom resolution of 400 by 400 with four times MSAA. Therefore, I can somehow push the GPU towards 100% load to make sure that the frequency is always the same as what we would have in the benchmark. You can see GPU currently running about 1700 while memory clock is 2125 megahertz. I pushed it to the maximum that's available in MSI Afterburner, which is plus 1500. And we will now see if this is stable in times by extreme and if it will yield an additional performance. We just had a crash in uh, 3D Mark times by Extreme right at the end of the benchmark. I lowered the memory clock right now from 2125 to 2175. Uh, luckily the driver reset restored the card, we didn't have to reboot, which saved us a little bit of time. Time to rerun. 47.7 FPS after increasing the memory, which is about a 3% increase of performance. It's not really that much considering how much we push the memory on the card, but it also makes sense because the Titan RTX has a really, really strong memory interface and therefore it was kind of um, obvious that we will, would not see that much of an improvement by overclocking the memory. Now I also decreased the memory still a little bit to plus, uh, to plus 1100 to make sure it's more stable because I want to use this also as a daily application. I will keep it at plus 1100 and see how this goes for one hour of firm mic, a little bit more times by extreme testing and then later on also gaming. But now let's just increase power limit and see how much performance we can get from just pushing up the sliders of power limit and temperature limit. Increasing the power limit increased our performance by additional 2%, resulting in 48.76 FPS right now, four times by Extreme GT1. I will now spend some time and try to overclock the GPU and see how far I can push it and then I will be back. I ended up at almost 52 FPS in uh, GT1, running about yeah, 20, 50 megahertz on the GPU, sometimes 10 megahertz lower, sometimes 10 megahertz higher. Memory is still at 2025. I will now lower this to plus 160 to have a little bit more safety headroom over here for daily use. I will keep this setting right now, save it as profile one and also use this for daily and see how stable this will be over the next few days. 
I will keep this setting for the next uh, two or three days, just keep it while gaming, also while working like uh, in Adobe Premiere, see how, sa how stable this setting of the Titan RTX will be. So far the CPU is still entirely stock, I only applied the XMP setting, which was no problem whatsoever, running 34, 66 megahertz on the memory, but there is still a lot of work we have to do on the memory, we want to overclock the memory, ideally get it to 3600 and above, and also adjust all CPU cores individually because we have 28 cores on this CPU we can overclock individually every single core we can adjust clock and voltage which is really really cool but it will also take a lot of time that's something we will cover in the next video together probably with stuff like SSD temperatures SSD benchmarks stuff like that if there is anything in particular if there's anything in particular you want to see please leave it down in the comments below thanks for tuning in and see you next time bye